happy Monday. Um, first thing we're going to do today, well, we're going to be doing lesson 108. So we're going to revisit square roots real quick. And then we're going to do um, radical equations using those square root principles that we will learn today. Um, so we've talked a lot about a square root this year. Um, this, uh, the definition of square root basically says, so that if x is greater than zero, okay, so the x that's in this problem right here, the square root of x, um, if we have the square root of x and we want to solve for that x, all we have to do is multiply the whole thing um, to the second power, okay? So when we do that, these two are going to cancel out. So the square root of something that is being squared, it's going to cancel out that radical sign. So we're going to end up with just this x. So let's look at this as if it was um, real numbers instead of um, variables. So if we had the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, we know that 2 times 2 would be 4, right? So the square root of 4 would be 2, right? But when you multiply a square root by the same thing, it's going to eliminate the square root. So we can skip that step. So it's going to be, um, it's going to give us just 2. Same thing here with the 7. We've got um, the square root of 7 times the square root of 7. And um, really, that's just going to be 7, right? Because 7 times 7 would be 49. The square root of 49 is 7. But when I multiply it by itself, I can really eliminate uh, that radical, right? Okay. Um, it could also look like this instead. So we have the square root of 2. You could do it this way instead where you put parentheses around it and square it, that's going to eliminate this and this. So you're left with just the two there. Same thing here, the square root of seven squared is going to be seven, okay? You can also do this in equations as well um, or with more than one term. So you have um, the square root of x squared um, plus four. So if I want to eliminate this radical, I'm going to multiply this whole thing uh, to the second power. So I'm going to put parentheses around it. When I do that, that's going to eliminate the radical and leave me with just what's inside. Okay, keep that in mind because we're going to need that on the next step um, of today's lesson. Okay, so now we're going to take that information and we're going to solve equations using that. Okay, so... First, we have a problem over here that says solve the, um, the square root of x minus 2 plus 3 equals 0. So this x minus 2 is all that's in the radical, okay? So I'm going to start with what's not, and I'm going to start moving that to the other side. I'm going to try and isolate the x, okay? So I'm going to first move this 3 to the other side of the equation. It's a positive 3, so we want to move it. We're going to, uh, so we're going to make it a negative, so we're going to subtract it from both sides. So minus 3, minus 3. Um, so now I have, on this side of the equation, I've got x, mi x minus 2 still in the radical equals negative 3. Now I want to isolate the, the x. So in order to do that, I have to take that radical away. So I'm going to square this in order to um, take the radical sign off. What I do to one side of the equation, remember, we have to do to the other. So I'm going to be squaring both sides of this equation. So now I've got x minus 2, no longer have a radical, equals, uh, we had negative 3 squared, which is going to give us a positive 9, because negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. Okay, now we can really isolate that x. So we're going to add the 2 to both sides of the equation, and x is going to give us 11. Okay, so we add 2 here, um, those 2 cancel out, so 2 plus uh, 9 is 11. Okay. This is very important. You have to check yourself, and I'll show you why. Okay, so I'm going to take the solution, and I'm going to plug it into the equation and make sure that it is correct. Okay, so it, even though it worked out where that x solved, um, when we solved that x, it, it says it's 11, so let's see if that actually works in this equation. So we've got to plug it in, so 11 minus 2 plus 3 equals 0. This 11 minus 2 is in the radical, right? So um, let's go ahead and subtract that. So 11 minus 2 is going to give us 9. So we've got the square root of 9 plus 3 equals 0. The square
square root of 9 is 3. Um, so then we have 3 plus 3 equals 0. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 does not equal 0. So this is actually false. So the solution to this equation is actually empty set. So that is why it's very important for you to check these, um, check these problems after you have solved, okay? Okay, now let's look at a different one. So this one says solve x uh, square root of x minus 2 minus 6 equals 0. So I'm going to isolate that x. So I'm going to start with this 6 here. We're going to add 6 to both sides of the equation. Um, these two are going to cancel out. 0 plus 6 is going to give you 6. Okay, so now we've got uh, the square root of x minus 2 equals 6. And I, again, I want to get rid of that radical. So I'm going to um, uh, square this whole side. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So 6 squared is going to give us 36. And then that's going to get rid of, um, of our radical signs here. So we've got x minus 2 equals 36. Then I'm going to add 2 to both sides of the equation because it's being subtracted. I want to get rid of it on this side. So I'm going to add it over here. When we do that, it's going to give us 38. So 36 plus 2 is 38. So x is 38. So now, just like we did a while ago, we're going to check this again. So I plugged it back in. So we've got 38 minus 2. Uh, the square root of 38 minus 2 minus 6 equals 0. Um, now I'm going to start here. So 38 minus 2 is 36. The square root of 36 is 6. So we've got 6 minus 6 equals 0. 6 minus 6 is 0. So then we have 0 equals 0. 38 is the solution to this one. So sometimes it'll work. Sometimes it's not. So that's why, it, that's why it's very important for you to check these after you do them, okay? One more set of practice problems together. Okay, so for the these last two problems, they are a little bit different just because um, the solutions kind of come out a little bit differently. So let's look at these, what's unique about them. Okay, so we have um, solve the square root of x squared plus nine minus five equals zero. Okay, so we're still gonna start off the same way, but I do notice um, something different about this one is that this x is squared in this problem where that has not happened before. So let's move this 5 to the other side of the equation. It's being subtracted, so we're going to add it to both sides. So we'll have the square root of x squared plus 9 equals 5. Okay. Now that I have that radical by itself, I can um, raise both sides of this equation to the second power in order to get rid of the radical. So when I do that here, I'm going to be left with just x squared plus 9. Over here, 5 squared is going to give us 25. So x squared plus 9 equals 25. Now I want to um, get uh, that x by itself. So I've got the next step would be to subtract 9 from both sides. When we do that, these two are going to cancel out. 25 minus 9 is 16. So we've got x squared equals 16. Now there are two possible things that could give me 16, okay? So um, you could get 4 times 4, that would give you 16, or negative 4 times negative 4, which would also give you 16. So there are two possible outcomes for this equation. So we're going to check both of them just to see, okay? So um, I've plugged in positive 4 here and negative 4 here. Um, I'm going to start off the same way, which would be raising that 4 to the uh, second power, which would give us 16 here. When we raise the 4 to the second power, it would also give us 16. So 16 plus 9 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. So both of these um, check out. So both... Um, Negative 4 and positive 4 are both solutions on that. Okay, this last problem is a little bit different, okay? We have um, the square root of x minus 1 minus 3 plus x equals 0. So I still want to get everything to the other side of the equation except for this radical. So that way I can um, raise it to the second power and get rid of the radical. So I'm going to be moving the positive 3 over and I'm going to be moving the x over. So when we do that, we have uh, the square root of x minus 1 equals 3 minus x. So now I'm going to multiply both sides uh, 
to the power of two. So I'm going to raise both to, um, to the second power. When we do that over here, we're going to end up with just x minus 1. Now, this is a little bit different because this is not raising 3 to the second power and x to the second power. That's where most people get confused. This is actually seen as a group now. So if you can remember back when we were in class together, remember that when something, when a group like this is being raised to the second power, it is really 3 minus x times 3 minus x. What do we do here? We FOIL, remember? So then we multiply first, outer, inner, and then last. So I've done that here. I've got um, x minus 1, which is where that came from, okay, equals 9 minus 3x minus 3x uh, plus x squared, okay? Then I can simplify my like terms, so I'm going to combine these two. That's actually going to give us 9 minus 6x plus x squared. Now, I, in order to solve this, I'm going to solve this by factoring. So, I'm going to move everything to the other side of the equation. When I do that, I'm going to combine the like terms that I have. So, um, I have a positive 9 and a negative 1. I have a, um, I have a uh, negative 6x. So, I'm going to be combining that with just the 6. So, I'm moving everything over. So, I'll end up with x squared because there's nothing to combine that x with. Um, minus 7x plus 10 equals 0. I'm going to set everything equal to 0. Don't forget to combine your like terms. When you do that, then you can factor this out. So, I'm going to factor this in the binomial. So, x, um, x minus 2 and x minus 5. You guys remember we are looking for a number that gives us a product of this but adds together to give us a sum of this, remember? So the x uh, minus 2 and x minus 5, those are the only two possible outcomes for that. Then I'm going to isolate each one. I'm going to set each one by uh, equal to 0. So I've got x minus 2 equals 0, x minus 5 equals 0, um, and then I'm just going to get the x by itself. So we've got x equals 2 and x equals 5. Now, I ran out of room, but you are going to check these, okay? Because if you were to actually check this out, you would find that x minus 2, when it plugs back into the equation, x minus 2 is the only one that actually works. x minus 5 does not actually work for this equation. So, don't forget, check, 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 okay? Um, you are going to do page 457 in your textbook. Um, just do the odd problems on that page, just that one page. Um, the answers are in the back of your book. Do not forget that tomorrow we are having a Zoom meeting um, to review for our math test that we have on Wednesday. So I will give you the information in your email that you will get tomorrow of what time, uh, I believe it's at one o'clock, uh, but you'll get all the information in tomorrow's um, email. Um, and if when you finish this, snap a picture, send it over to me so I know that you're on the right track. Have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye.